Hi, and welcome to Healthy Life Hacks. I'm Jennifer Jeffries, the present day wise woman. I'm a realistic naturopath coming to you from the surfing beaches of Australia. This show is for those of you who are wanting to really rock your life and rock your health and just live from a place of prevention, not waiting to get sick and tired and sucky. That's it. So let's get into today's episode. It's a cold winter's morning. 6 a.m. It's dark. You can hear it raining outside. And you promised yourself last night before you went to bed that you would get up and you would exercise this morning. <laughs> the alarm clock goes off. You hear it. You feel the damp in the air. You feel that cold and you just go one snooze button. I'm just going to do one snooze button and then I'll get out of bed and I'll go to the gym and it'll all be good. What happens in five, 10 minutes, the snooze button goes off and you've just snuggled back in and you're thinking, I can hear the rain. I know it's cold. I'll just do one snooze button. I really will. I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do my exercise like I promised myself last night. As soon as that next snooze button goes off, the next snooze button goes off and you just go, it's still raining and it's cold and I'm just not going to go to the gym. What do you do the rest of the day? Do you just go, yeah, I didn't go to the gym, didn't work out, woohoo. Or do you go, oh, Jen, you bloody loser. You promised yourself last night that you would work out. You promised yourself and you caved in. You didn't do it. Jen, you're a loser. Like, really? How can you ever expect to hit your goals if you're just not even going to get out of bed? Have you ever had that conversation with yourself? In my 30 years as a naturopath, I promise I have spoken to and helped so many people with exactly that challenge. So welcome to podcast number 27. I'm Jen, and I'm here to talk about how to tap into yourself discipline to do the things that one you say you're going to do and that you really want to do. So I remember in 1979 when I joined the Australian Army, I learned really quick that self-discipline is just doing the opposite, the absolute opposite of what I want to do. Think about that for a moment. It's the opposite of doing what you want to do. So I learned when I first joined the army, you know, we were up early and you're off doing PT and then you're into, you know, learning, learning and working, working and all this kind of stuff every day through recruit course. And you learn really quick, like really quick to tap into self-discipline. How do you learn it? You know the consequences, you know the punishment that you'll receive if you don't do what you're meant to do. So I learned, imagine it's, you know, it, it's the same thing. The alarm clock goes off in the morning and, and, it's raining outside and it's cold outside and, and I, the alarm goes off and I go, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. Well, right back in 1979, I learned that if it's hard to do, it's more important to do it. And I have lived that way for the last, well, what, 41, 42 years. I've lived that way for a long time now and it works for me. And that's how I've personally helped myself to tap into self-discipline and do the things that I just don't want to do because you know that you magically find the time and the motivation to do the things you do want to do. But if it's hard to do, it, I promise the growth in that of actually doing what you said you're going to do is just priceless. So let's jump in and talk about this a bit more. So imagine that you'd, you'd run that whole scenario. The, the alarm went off, but you're coming from a place of self-discipline. You, you go, yeah, it's raining, it's cold. I don't want to get out of bed, but you just, I take a deep breath and you go, I'm getting out of bed. That's it. It's not even a thought. It's just like the alarm went off. I made the agreement with myself to get out of bed. I'm up, I'm up and I'm going and I'm into the day. That's it. What is that conversation with yourself the rest of the day? Do you think you're giving yourself a hard time and feeling guilty and down on yourself because you got out of bed and achieved the goal for the day? No, it's a different kind of like, yeah, Jen, you rock on it. And you know how good you feel. You know how good you feel after you've been to the gym. You know the feeling in it. You know it's worth it. But dragging your ass out on a cold, rainy day, it's 
tough sometimes. And it's only self-discipline that gets us out of bed to go and do that. Self-discipline is defined as being the ability you have to control and motivate yourself and to stay on track and do what's working for you, not what's not working for you. That's it. Now, some people call it willpower, which is it really is. You're digging deep and finding that willpower, that self-discipline to be able to do what you want to do in life. The truth is self-discipline is actually a learned skill. It's not innate in us. We learn it. We learn through the whole you know, reward and pain kind of system. We know that if we have the discipline to do the hard things now, we know the benefits in the future, all those kind of things. But they're mind games that keep us trapped in that we're not being self-disciplined. And we all have different areas of our life where we are more self-disciplined, whether it's someone you know, absolutely is so focused on doing their exercise all the time, but then they can't keep house. Or other people who are really disciplined on their food eating, but they won't exercise. Or other people that they're really disciplined on their work ethic, but won't look after themselves. That was mine a long time ago. I'd work and work and work and wouldn't do the self-care. That's how I burned out. So we all have strengths and weaknesses in different areas. The secret is to, to focus on the areas that you can that you have got discipline and try bringing the same disciplines across and the same sense of feeling of, of achievement that you do. You know, I just, I love my work so much. I just, I really do. I love helping people. It feeds me good vibes. And so I've applied that same sense of self-discipline to even to surfing. I surf through winter. I get up at 5 a.m. It's pitch black. It won't be light for another hour and a half to two hours. And it's bloody cold. And the ocean is bloody colder. And the wind is even colder. But I know how good I feel when I'm out there surfing. And so I choose to, I found that sense of self-discipline in other areas of my life. And I simply applied it. So if it's the middle of winter for me and it's a cold, dark, windy, gusty kind of morning, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to freeze. When the alarm clock goes off or when I wake up, I don't think twice. That's it. It's like, I'm awake, I'm out of bed. That's it. I jump out of bed straight away. I never, never roll over. Be why? Because that's the trap to get us into the trap that we'll hit a snooze button or we'll say five more minutes won't matter. Well, it will matter because that's the easiest way. You're going down that rabbit hole that's going to take you off track that you won't, you're not keeping your agreements with yourself. There was a really interesting study in Vienna at the Vienna University of Economics and Business uh, a few years ago, only a few years, I think it's like 2018. And in it, they found that self-disciplined people don't focus on deprivation. They don't focus on missing out. They focus on managing kind of conflicting goals and they create a structure in their life to be able to achieve the goal. Okay, now, if anyone is interested in reading all the big studies, I'll throw the link in the show notes. It's really interesting. They kind of ran these, this, this three-part study. But that's the bottom line of it. We know to be self-disciplined, we don't want to focus on what we're missing out on. We want to focus on what's going to be really cool, but we've got to create a structure for it. And it starts with our mind. It really does. The secret is to, to have the conversation with yourself to kind of make the choice once. Once. That my agreement with myself once that I made is that I will sunrise surf a minimum of five days a week. Why? Because I know that's going to get me to achieve the goals that I really want to do. I made the agreement once. So every morning or I go to bed at my disciplined time because uh, I know it's worth it. I, I wake up naturally ready. And as soon as I wake up, whether it's by the alarm or I wake naturally, I'm out. My feet are on the floor and I start my day. I don't do anything else first. I go straight to the surf and I do my sunrise surfing session. And that's my form of, of exercise. So that works for me. The same with my sleep. I am very self-disciplined with my sleep. Why? Because I know the benefits to my physical and emotional health. So I know that five nights a week, no matter what, I go to bed by 10 p.m. and I sleep through and I wake up fresh and, I, and my body's strong and alive. I know that it's not, I'm not saying, oh, look, I'm missing out on another hour or so crap television or something like that by sitting up late by going to bed early instead of sitting up late, I'm focusing on the fact that I know what it brings into my life. I focus on the reward and that helps me to be able to be self-disciplined with it. That's it. I know how good I'll feel. 
So here's just a few ways to think about how to get that self-discipline in your life. The first one is you've got to forgive yourself, guys. Guilt tripping yourself and giving yourself a hard time in general does not work. All it does is negatively reinforce the negative behavior. It doesn't work. So if you notice you're off track, you know, I, I say one of my mentors taught me, no story, no problem. So if I notice I'm off track, it's just like, oh, wow, cool. I actually noticed this time. I'll come back on track. So imagine you do sleep in and hit the snooze button and don't get out of bed as you agreed. Imagine you do that. Instead of giving yourself a hard time all day for it and, and guilt tripping yourself and just feeding your brain all that negative energy, which just reinforces that behavior, break it, go, okay, it's a clean new day. I make the commitment to myself that from here on in, I exercise five mornings a week or whatever it is, or I sunrise surf, or I will be in bed on or before 10 p.m. of the night because I know how good it feels to wake fresh. Make the decision once, once, and then live into that without giving yourself a hard time when you're off track because it just, it makes it worse. It will not help. The next one is to remove temptations. The next one is to remove temptation. So if you know, let's talk about nutrition for a bit, because this is a big area where, you know, there's, there's too many temptations. Imagine you're the person who's addicted to, you know, you, you love chocolate or you love potato chips or you love ice cream or whatever your crap food is, whatever is that thing. Okay. Don't buy it. It's really simple. Just don't buy it. Don't have it in the house. It's that's it. It's really simple. Remove the temptation. That's a big part to you being able to achieve and have the self-discipline. If it's sitting in there, it's going to call you. I promise. If you've got ice cream in the fridge, it's going to go, hey, Jen, 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 come on. One little bowl. It's going to do it. And then it takes all this extra effort to, to resist it. Just don't have the temptation there in the first place. Cool. The next one is plan for success. So set yourself up across the board. Like in that study, they found that people who had a structure for life absolutely found that self-discipline better. And if you need a buddy system to get you into that groove, that's the best way. We know when it comes to exercising or surfing, doing anything like that, go on for a walk. If you've got a mate, like an accountability buddy to travel with on that, that journey, you're going to you'll find that self-discipline better. So if you make an agreement when you go to bed tonight, you're going to go walking with a friend at six o'clock in the morning, you'll get your bum out of bed. Statistically, you will get your bum out of bed. Whereas if you do that, you're new to this and, and wanting to find that self-discipline, uh, setting, going to bed, setting the alarm, goes off at six and it's kind of like, uh, and it's that cold, rainy, windy morning. It's easier to opt out and not go compared to if you had an accountability buddy. So plan for success, set in a structure for you to achieve what you want to achieve in life. And it doesn't matter what it is in, in health or business or finances, set up that structure. And the next one is to focus on the motivation. And I did a really good podcast on podcast number 23. Go back and listen to it if you haven't listened to it, because it's talking about instead of just doing that, I'm going there, I'm going there, and you're focusing forward all the time. What we find is that it's easier for people to move away from the pain, consciously be moving away from the pain until they hit that point of critical mass. And then, then it, it just becomes so tangibly close to go for what it is that the goal is. Go back and listen to podcast 23 if you have not listened to that one yet. I promise there's information in there that will help you. And I am an aromatherapist, so I need to talk a little bit about essential oils as well. In the aromatherapy world, essential oils have physical uses and emotional uses. My specialty is on the emotional side of aromatherapy. And I talked about it in the previous podcast. If you haven't listened to it yet, go back and listen to podcast number 21, because in that one, Karen Osborne, the artist of the Aromatherapy Insight Cards, and I talk all about the emotional side of aromatherapy essential oils. The first one I want to give you to think about, if you haven't used it yet, is check out some thyme essential oil. So T-H-Y-M-E. Time we use for helping to access that willpower. Remember, willpower is another word for self-discipline to achieve what you want to achieve in life. And then the other one is cedarwood. Cedarwood essential oil helps you to be able to access that courage to do what you want to do. And courage comes before confidence. There are two essential oils that you could use. Now, you would still use them the way you use oils, whether it is in a diffuser, whether it's in 
you know, an, an aromatherapy piece of jewelry, a necklace or something that you wear, with, you know, to have the oil around you all the time, whether it's you have a drop on your collar, doesn't matter. But those essential oils are really useful for helping to access that willpower and that courage to just make this happen. Today, I want to leave you with three healthy life hacks. The very first one is really try on and whether you write it somewhere or as an affirmation somewhere, but I have lived by this affirmation and this belief since 1979 and I first joined the Australian Army. And the belief is that if it's hard to do, it's more important to do it. That's it. If it's hard to do, it's even more important to do it. So if it is that I'm committed, if I want to improve my surfing, I know I need to surf a minimum of three to five days a week. Great. I enjoy sunrise surfing. It fits in with my day beautifully. The discipline for me, the self-discipline is that even if it is a, the middle of winter and it's a cold, rainy, windy, nasty day, I still get up and I go. And it's a discipline because I know the benefits in it for me. And I say to myself, promise some days I'll, you know, something will come up and I know I should do it. There's no shoulds. I, it's choice. If one of those things comes up, I go, oh, Jen, if that's really hard to do. Okay. I really have to do this. So that's it. Healthy life hack. Number one, if it's hard to do, it's even more important to do it. Healthy life hack. Number two is to track down some thyme and cedarwood essential oils and think about bringing them into your life. And healthy life hack. Number three is to go back and listen to podcast number 23. Now it's only a few episodes ago, but I promise it's worth it. Reframe in your mind what you're needing to do to move away from pain to get to the pleasure and it will make it more achievable for you. Have fun finding your self-discipline, guys. I promise it's worth it. Make sure you check out the next episode because I'm going to talk all about why keto and intermittent fasting that's become really trending at the moment don't work long term. So make sure you check out that episode too. I want to thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it with your friends and scroll down to the comment section, guys. It's below the description of the video because click into the line that says add a public comment, add your comment, click the comment box. And every month I draw one lucky person who leaves a comment down below to have a free one hour consultation with me. Also, be sure to subscribe to the show so that, and like it so that you're always catching that next episode. If you'd like to receive a free copy of my Feed Your Body ebook, simply click the link in the comments below, join my newsletter, and you will get the free ebook sent to you nice and easy. So I welcome your emails. You can write to me at podcast at healthylifehacks.com.au. Until next time, guys, remember that when it comes to life, live it love it and get on with it.